everybody. Um, I'm sure that you are well aware that the national land surveys are using open source tools quite a lot. But is that a conscious decision? Has it been decided by the management? Or do you have even written it written in the strategy? Or this applies also to the other public sector organizations. And this talk will des describe how National Land Survey in Finland is approaching this topic. So we are an open organization in quite a few ways. We are, have opened our data since 10 years ago with a CC BY license. And uh, we are, of course, a great promoter and a great user of open standards. We are also uh, participating in OGC activities, and we want to promote use of open standards in our products as well as in, in the society. And then, of course, we are a big user of open source software, and also we are producing some open source software. You may have heard of uh, There's a presentation about Oscari uh, during the conference as well. It's a framework provided by the National Lamp Survey uh, originally, and now it's a community project. And then, as a fourth point, we are also big on open collaboration. So all of these things require collaboration, and that's something, uh, an aspect that we really need to work on still. So a little bit of a history. Um, to, like up until 2010, we had uh, mainly a bit scattered use of uh, open source tools within the National Land Survey. But in 2009, we did make a decision to build a Finnish geoportal, for the Inspire geoportal, on open source tools. Uh, that was an easy decision to make because that was kind of a new effort for the National Land Survey. It, it doesn't involve changing our existing systems to, to anything different, but we kind of started from the scratch, building on top of open source tools and um, kind of on, in an agile methodologies and all kind of new stuff in this effort. But then later on, uh, we introduced this uh, source code for the GeoPortal as the Oscar web mapping, mapping platform. So we kind of entered the community side of things in that effort. But then uh, it took a few years before we kind of made our next big step. And that was the decision in 2020 to build our new spatial data production system on open source. And this is uh, now an ongoing effort and it's going to complete by the end of next year. And um, then we realized in, in the National Land Survey that we actually need some guidelines. How do we um, uh, deal with open source solutions? Because this was a kind of a one-off decision still that we built this system on open source. But how do we uh, interact with the community? How, how do we uh, strategically uh, relate to open source? And that's why we have now completed our, our open source guidelines this spring. They are part of like bigger IT guidelines that we have for the organization. So just to mention that we are using a lot of open source tools at the National Land Survey. I think it amounts up to approximately 100 different kind of um, libraries, frameworks, software. And uh, one could ask that what would work at the National Land Survey if none of the, these tools existed? And I can say that nothing. We would not give customer service. We would not be able to deliver any APIs, any data to customers without these wonderful tools that are being made available by the community. So we very much appreciate what has been done in the community, and we also want to participate in that effort uh, much more in the future. That might be, to some extent, a little bit even too much to have that many open source tools in use, but uh, we are looking to maybe consider that at least a little bit. But then, uh, in a public sector setting, you would always create a strategy to, to push forward your goals. So our ICT strategy is to be a forerunner in a public sector, in, at least in Finland, maybe even internationally, a little bit. And we need to use up-to-date technologies and be very much customer-focused in our digital services. And then internally, we use common methodologies in producing our solutions and also use common solutions within the organization, uh, connected by OGC standards, of course, and other standards as well. And, and the last point is that we need to be a motivating and sought after place to work. And, and that is a very pressing point at these times, because people are changing jobs, and we need to be a, an, an attractive, attractive employer. And we made a, a little survey uh, with our experts about what kind of tools they want to use. And it was like 80 or 85% of people 
our experts want to use open source tools. So this is a kind of a very clear point to our management to say that open source must be kind of a strategic um, choice as well because our employees want to use it and we will not get employees unless we use open source tools. Then, to implement our strategy, we have these IT guidelines which include some provisions about open source. The first one is to maximize the benefit of our activities to the society as, as a whole. So all the works, results of the work that in, incur some public spending, we should be making them openly available. And then that's whenever it's possible. There might be some cases where we can't do that, but this is a general rule, rule that we have now started to apply. And we are now investigating into the solutions we have done and seeing if we can publish them with some polishing maybe. Um, and and uh, in the future, we will try to do all of our self-developed solutions in such a way that they can be published. The second point is simply use open source. So basically, open source solutions shall be used when we develop our IT systems or, or acquire them whenever that's applicable and possible. So there's a bit of a condition there because, for instance, when we work with the, the government um, uh, provided uh, software like Teams and Outlook, we cannot, of course, exchange that because of interoperability reasons. We have to be interoperable with other government agencies in Finland. But for our own production systems, we can make the choice whether to use open source or not. And then there's uh, also the provision that any exceptions to these guidelines have to be approved by the National Land Survey IT Board. And this means that you cannot just go ahead and buy something uh, of the market without uh, first consulting our management board. So that's, uh, these are the guidelines, and um, probably you want to know why are we going open source first in our policy level. Well, I have, I have five reasons here. The first of all, uh, the, the most important one in my mind is that we have made a strategic enterprise architecture choice to use open source tools because we want to be in control of our enterprise architecture. We don't want uh, any solutions to kind of influence our architecture that we design, we, because we want to, want to be able to run our systems and build our architecture based on our business needs that we have, on the customer needs and then on the business needs that we have. So that's the, the key point for us. Um, we don't want to adapt our processes according to what the software has been designed for, but we want to adapt the software. And this is not, or it, it, it might be possible with the commercial, or, or not commercial, but closed software, um, but it will be much more difficult to do when, when you have closed software. With the open software, we can do this, and it's actually rather, rather simple to either adapt the software or make add-ons. And we want to invest in co-creating value through open collaboration with our stakeholders, with other agencies in Finland, as well as abroad, and even increasingly with the communities of open source tools and data. And then we, we uh, have embraced agile and open ways of working internally and with our partners. We are using safe type of approach for working uh, of developing our applications, and it works very well with open source. And then uh, we have a research unit within the National Land Survey, the FGI, you may have heard of that, and they are making top-level research uh, regarding machine learning, a new types of cartography, APIs, etc. And all of this research, or most of it anyway, is being based on open source tools. And that's why we, we can, when we use the same tool set in the production environments, we can always leverage from the research results very easily to, towards our production. And the fifth one is that we want a modular architecture which is based on open standards and uh, to, so that we can exchange components as the world changes uh, rapidly, as you know very well. We need resilience for change and open source provides us with that kind of resilience. And you can see that the, the list doesn't contain uh, the price. It's, it's almost or approximately as cheap to or as expensive to develop open source production systems in, in our finding. However, the, the savings come from this modularity, standards-based things, 
as well as the architecture control that we have over our systems when we choose ourselves what kind of tools we are using. Um, and then uh, about the new spatial data production system that we are now currently uh, pursuing. Um, as I said, many times we design the system architecture based on our business needs, not the other way around. And we have chosen, of course, uh, QGIS, uh, both GIS and other ma mature, uh, mature open source software as a basis of our architecture there. And we are, we are seeking collaboration with other agencies, as well as even, even the communities then, to, to develop the, the components uh, and the new features and, and the bug fixes, et cetera, into this, uh, so that it works, the solution works for us. And also, the other agency in, in Finland might be, have been quite interested in, in if we find common uh, use cases to participate in same, similar efforts. And especially the last point, I would like us to work on a little bit more. How do we work with the communities and the core contributors of the projects in a, in a meaningful way and, and as directly as possible, so that we, we have the we, we are able to make all the developments according to the community guidelines, so that we benefit, we give value to the communities in, instead of only drawing from the communities, which we of course do as well. So we don't want. Uh, separate versions of the com, uh, products to be maintained, but we want to uh, influence the, the communities uh, how how it, uh, the products are developed further. And I will, uh, as for competence, we have uh, our, of course, the subject matter knowledge about topographic mapping. We have the enterprise architecture design. Um, we have some developers as well, but then we work in collaboration with other organizations in Finland as well as the companies. And, uh, and we have also engaged in some co-funding and crowdfunding mechanisms. Uh, for example, QGIS uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign. This might sometimes be a little bit tricky on the public sector because of procurement rules, but I think we've found our way around that at least. We think that it should be quite okay actually to, to do that kind of uh, participation. And uh, in the Nordic uh, collaboration with, with Sweden, Norway, and other Nordic countries, we have developed machine learning methods and some AI uh, training data for in, in, a, in a common common project, which is very nice. And this is based, of course, on open source tooling. And then for the community part, I hope that we can improve how we work with the communities. Then uh, just a couple of words, I mentioned the, the difficulties and the procurement side of things, but still I would like to answer the, this question, can you choose open source? And my answer is yes, because it is kind of an enterprise architecture decision and it doesn't in itself incur any public set spending, so you don't spend money by choosing an architecture. And um, anybody who bids for any any tenders we may put out, they can use open source components. On an, there's no discrimination against any, of, any bidder because they are open, they are free of charge, basically the solutions, at least the basic ones. So it, doesn't mat, it shouldn't matter if we say that we, we want to use PostGIS, we want to use QGIS, etc. And But of course, when you buy something, you have to look at the directive and do it as in, to the point. And then I want to share a couple of uh, insights on a global level which kind of impact our decisions or have impacted our decision on, on choosing open source on a strategic, on a strategic level. So 95% of all companies, says Gartner, uh, are using open source software on a global level. These are big companies, I believe. But I just have to wonder what are the other 5% of the companies doing <laughs> if they are not choosing open source. Maybe they are going out of business quite soon. And then there's another figure. 70% of the big companies are invest, going to invest more in open source solutions uh, going, going forward to year 25. So this means that the public sector has to also follow this trend. It's, it's so strong that if you are lagging behind, you are going to be obsolete in, in the future. And on the European Union level, there's an open forum, Europe, Think Tank, which is uh, providing 
for instance, some studies for the European Commission. And this is a very in interesting figure if you look at that 65 billion euros impact of open source in the EU economy per year. And if you were to increase open source contributions by 10%, that would mean a 95 billion increase in, in gross domestic product per year. That's a huge figure. Please read the report, it's very interesting. And another concept developed by Open Forum Europe is an open source program office. And this is a concept that I think suits very well for the public sector organizations. So it kind of a, it's a practice for coordinating open source activities within the organizations, but also with the communities. And this is what we are kind of starting to set up within our organization as a virtual open source team. And even some member states have made some legal provisions, to my understanding, towards the use of open source within the public sector. Um, and, and, and I can see why, because open source is identified as a critical for kind of a digital sovereignty. So the community is maintaining open source. They need to be supported. And the, who should do that? Well, public sector organizations should take care of digital sovereignty on, on, on many levels. So my takeaways from this talk will be that open source should be a part of every organization's digital agenda, including the public sector organizations. Also, I believe that making the choice of, of using open source should be a strategic one. Your management has to be involved in the decision and it has to be done consciously, not just drifting into using open source solutions. Of course, that's doable, but then you don't have the support of the management and you don't have it written in your strategy and guidelines. And then, uh, the more you provide open data, the more you use open standards, the more you use and, and, and support um, open source code, the more it supports and empowers collaboration and the communities who are maintaining these important components. And it boosts the digital sovereignty on all levels, in, on, on continent level, on country level, on organization level. You are, not, you are much more independent when you use open source. So public sector organizations should definitely engage in this kind of activities and, and lie a serve with, with the, uh, the open source communities much more than we do at the moment. So be brave and be open. That's my message to you. And uh, on this last slide, if you want to hear more about our the topographic data production system, there's a talk by Olli on, 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 on Friday and a couple of more talks about how we use open source. Thank you so much for listening.